Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 113 for Disney. It's all about the money. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my informed and enlightened co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, dear? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing awesome, especially when we have an entire episode dedicated to bashing Disney. <laughs> See, sometimes it's the gift that gives, it's gonna, you know. <laughs> it's going to make this a very fun episode for me. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. So we're recording kind of a little off schedule today. Yeah, we had a couple of events that popped up. and We couldn't get around to doing it on uh, Thursday. And then Friday, I wasn't feeling up to it. And, and why and didn't we do it on Thursday? On Thursday, we had a moving up ceremony. We sure did. For our Insights into Teens co-host, Mich- uh, Madison. Yeah, I'm, I'm Michelle. You're Michelle, yeah. Our daughter I wrote that Michelle. down, so I know. <laughs> And what is a moving up ceremony for those that aren't familiar with that terminology? Isn't that where you sit around and sing the theme to the Jeffersons? <laughs> no, that's not it. No, it was her eighth grade graduation. Oh, right. That. I was there for it. Yeah, you were. I even have video of it. Yeah, we do. But we're not showing that today. No, no. No. And then Friday was Loki. I mean, uh, Friday was just an off night for us. <laughs> right. Because we didn't watch it on Wednesday, right. because that's when you guys do that's insights do into, into teens. teens. So, we so to... yeah, so we opted to watch Loki on Friday, mm-hmm. and our schedule's all off, so we're recording on Saturday, today. which is what we used to do, correct, a yeah. while ago. So we're you know, yeah. But don't so, worry, next week we'll be back on Thursday. Yes. So now that we're all over the place with what we're discussing. <laughs> Today's episode in uh, our Disney detective, we'll talk about uh, nobody who wants to go to Disneyland can afford it, which I can sympathize with. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we'll also look at a new version of FastPass coming to the Disney parks. Possibly. Possibly. Probably. Maybe. Knowing Disney. Mm. If they can make a buck off of it, they will. Yeah. Then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy is another iconic Star Wars villain getting a Disney Plus series. Sure, why not? Everyone well, gets their own series. I was going to say, and you get a show, and you get a show. And I, I think the pit show. droids from Watto's <laughs> Shop are getting their own series now. Shh, they uh, just might, <laughs> now that you said that. And is Gina Carano returning to Star Wars? Maybe, but not how you expect. Nope. No, no. <laughs> Then in our entertainment news, Pink is feeling the love and by Zoe and all the other shows that are not coming back this year. And then we'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week. Are we ready? Yes, we sure are. Sure. <laughs> Before we do get into it, uh, I would implore folks to subscribe to the podcast You can get audio versions of the podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment. Video versions of all of our shows can be found listed as Insights into Things. We are on Google, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, etc., etc., yada, yada, yada. I would also invite folks to reach out to us, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at Twitter at, right, at something we're on twitter at insights oh, we're somewhere things. can you tell it's a little early in the morning for me i got up late today on facebook we're at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast on instagram you can find us at instagram.com slash insights into things or links to all of those and much more on our website 
at www.insightsintothings.com. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'm just about done already. <laughs> oh, boy. So now let's get into the fun part. All righty. <laughs> Go for Disney Detective. So our first story uh, comes from fatherly.com, and it talks about how nobody who wants to go to Disney can actually afford it. So Disney parks are a family-friendly, family-favorite vacation destination across the United States. But a poll that was done by Insider uh, showed that the people who actually want to go to Disney the most are the ones who are least likely to be able to afford it. So here's the deal. Disney vacations, like everything it seems, have become way more expensive over time. But the people who want to go to to Disney the most, who are the middle class people with families, haven't gotten richer alongside them. So in fact, people who make less than $75,000 per year are self-reported to be the most interested in going to Disney. But most people definitely don't make enough money to go to Disney, considering how, per the website's own estimates, it would take about three years of saving $200 a month to save for the cheapest version of a Disney vacation for a family of four. So nearly um, of nearly 1,100 respondents, those who made between 50 and 75, <clears throat> excuse me, thousand dollars a year were most likely to report wanting to go to Disney. Those who earn less than that were the second most likely to report wanting to go to the most magical place on earth. Meanwhile, wealthier people, firmly upper middle class earners and families were far less likely to say they would want to go to Disney. So considering a vacation of four to Disney World can cost thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars for a family of four earning less than or just barely six figures, it's not a cheap vacation. In fact, those results were echoed in Insider Survey. And according to them, 32% of people with kids said they'd like to go to Disney but just can't afford it. So no wonder, with the tickets costing hundreds of dollars, hotel stays uh, that aren't cheap, and you have the inflated cost of airline flights on top of that, you have your food and, and other expenses. So it, it does end up costing quite a bit for the average family to go. And, you know, considering how often we go, we can certainly attest to these numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems over the last couple of years, it's gotten progressively worse. Right. For instance, if you were staying on Disney property before, there was no charge for parking. Right. Now, the only way you can stay on Disney property and not pay for parking is if you're staying at a DVC using your points. Right. <clears throat> right. Which is outrageous because right. they didn't improve parking. They didn't mm -hmm. add security. They right. didn't make it more convenient. They didn't do anything. All they did was start charging you to park mm -hmm. at, a, at their resort that you're already paying mm -hmm. to stay at. Right. Which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, and that problem seems to continue especially with the pandemic because they've cut back services they've cut back attractions right they've cut back shows yet they didn't bother to cut back the price of the tickets right the, so the, you're getting 30 percent less still, of an experience mm -hmm. and paying a hundred percent a hundred 103 percent because i think it went up three percent right and and there are lots of people who were long time disney vacationers who decided to stop going because of that, because they weren't seeing anything extra for their money. Right. Now, granted, you know, in in their defense, the average park ticket, $115 roughly, maybe if that, you know. Per person. Per, per day. person per day. Now, if you, the more days you buy, the cheaper it does get. So there's that. Think about when you go to a concert. How much do you pay for a, a concert venue? Well, it depends on who you go to. Anywhere right. from 50 to 150 bucks. Right. Know. And when you go to a concert, you're only going for two hours, right. three hours tops. So if you try and balance it out, again, not taking sides, 
paying $115 for a full day but at an amusement park. But I pay $115 a ticket. I go on two rides. Right. Why am I paying $115 oh, absolutely. to go on two rides? Oh, and, and trust me, Why that's a whole other... Why can't I just walk other... in the park and then pay to go on the rides that I want to go on? Right, and that's a whole other, you know... That's a major problem that I have. Number two, right. when I go to a concert, I'm getting a full-blown experience at that absolutely. concert. Absolutely. I'm not getting crowded in with somebody else. I'm not waiting in a line for four uh, hours to get on a... You know, well, the one concert we had the drunk things. people that were in front of us. And right, but security, a... if you if you complain to security, they'll take true, care of it. True, true, right. You know, when I go to a concert, I'm not staying at a concert's hotel. I'm not staying at the venue's hotel, so I'm not paying that extra hundred and some dollars a night for that. But you're also paying $20 for a Diet Coke, <laughs> whereas at least at Disney you get like two. Well, <laughs> that's, that that's the thing. Like <laughs> Disney's refreshments aren't any cheaper. Right. And Disney is trying to sell me everything. Oh, everywhere absolutely. Everywhere I go. Oh, absolutely. Pretzels, uh, turkey legs. Right. Balloons, mm -hmm. T-shirts, everything. It's all about how much money they can mm -hmm. milk out of me when I walk in the park. Right, right. So I don't think it's a, it's a fair comparison. Well. Looking, uh, and I'm, this is the comparison that Disney throws out there because it's in their advantage. Right. But it's a completely different experience. But the other thing, too, is if you look at comparable amusement parks, they're roughly, you know, you, you can't. Theme parks. They theme are. parks. Theme parks. You can't, you know, say, you know, you can't compare Disney to Knoebels, you know. Exactly. Because it is too, com you know, or Dutch Wonderland. Um, you know, they are two completely different, you know, like Knoebels and Dutch Wonderland, you can do a comparison of. Right. You but know. See, the problem with Disney is Disney pitches itself as the total package. Oh, absolutely. They and do. back in late 80s, 90s, they tried to go for a more affordable vacation. Mm -hmm. You got your all star resorts. Right. They introduced the transportation systems. Right. Because you had your your magical express from the airport. Which they're taking, they've taken that away. Well, it will be. They're, they're taking next that year away. Next year it'll be gone. They're, right. And we're going to talk about in the next story about Fast Pass. They're taking that away well, as a free service. Yeah. You know, the problem that I have is that they, they're they like drug dealers, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they give you the first hit for free. Right. And then. And they get you hooked. Right. And then they. Then they rake you over the coals. Right. And it's it's deceptive practices. Right. And they're getting enough money. Disney has more money than God. Mm -hmm. They don't need to find more ways to milk me for well, money. And, and that's the thing, because like you were saying, Disney always was that, you know, back in the, you know, the 70s, the 80s. It was that dream vacation, right. that once in a lifetime trip. And then they started realizing Okay, everybody's been here once. How do we get them back? Oh, let's do a DVC. Now you can own part of Disney and come here once a year. Right. Well, then, like you said, they made, you know, affordable hotels because back in the day, there weren't, a, you know, if you wanted an you were affordable a hotel. You a night hotel minimum. Right. If you wanted a affordable hotel, you stayed off property and you know, so they got their guests that way. But when they wanted, realized, hey, if we build hotels, people will stay here. Well, let's do different tiers because obviously not everybody can stay at the Grand Floridian. You know, let's do our moderate and let's do our value. And, you know, so then they started realizing now all these people are coming. Now we we're building all these other parks. Now they're almost kind of stepping back from the hey, let's do a Disney vacation once every two years or once a year to the point of now it's a once in a lifetime exactly. again They're because you can. They're going back to a philosophy that right. was a failed philosophy to begin with. Right. And what they're doing now is completely contrary to the vision that Walt Disney had. Mm -hmm. It's a slap in the face to what Walt Disney wanted. He wanted an affordable place mm -hmm. that families could go right. that was clean, safe, and mm -hmm. fun. Right. And what Disney is doing is the exact opposite of that mm -hmm. now. Well, and and remember, you know, we we have a week's vacation coming up. 
we were trying to figure out what to to do. And on a whim, we were, you know, and as we've mentioned before, we're DVC members. We were like, all right, let's see if we can book something. And of course, short term, kind of hard to book something. But it was like, all right, well, we can kind of piece together this, this and this. We couldn't even get park reservations right. this short out. But then it was like, oh, well, if you have um, annual passes, you could. Like that seemed to be the only thing available. You can't buy a new annual pass right now because they have that block. So if we had renewed our annual passes from a couple of years back when we actually had annual passes and kept them, those would w- th- that would be the only way that you could buy a current annual pass. So right now, they're not even letting new annual pass people get well, passes. And that's another point. Even how they're dealing with their annual passes, they're not satisfied with the recurring revenue that they're getting. Right. Because they think the people that have annual passes that are coming multiple, multiple times, times a year, year, they're just not getting enough money out of them. Right. So they're going to do away or they're going to restructure their mm-hmm. annual passes so that the people that come once a year who are more likely to spend more money right. are going to be the more likely candidates to come in. It's just It just smacks of greed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you know, For a company that has the kind of money that they have mm-hmm. and they're bringing you know, – from so many different sources, the fact that they're that greedy and they want to ruin really what was a wonderful thing, a wonderful concept that Walt Disney came up with, mm-hmm. and they were going to ruin it just out of greed. And we're Disney stockholders. So in a way, we do benefit when they find right. new re- revenue streams. Right, right. But even as Disney stockholders, I think what they're doing is absolutely mm-hmm. wrong. Right. So... Let's talk about the next thing that you're doing wrong. <laughs> so now I, I will kind of, once we talk about the, our, our next topic, I, I have a little bit of an update. Um, so it might not be as bad. So this came from the Orlando Weekly, um, talking about how Disney may soon change something that they've been giving away for decades, as we were kind of hinting about. So since reopening last uh, last year after uh, the pandemic-related closure, Walt Disney World has been without the Fast Pass system. Um, so for those of you who have never been to Disney or, or know what it is, Disney offers a free skip the line uh program so if you happen to be staying on disney property you are able to make these fast pass quote-unquote reservations uh 60 days out um if you are not staying on property um and you have a, a park ticket you can make these reservations uh 30 days out i believe Um, And what it is, is that you basically go online, you tell it what park and what day you're going to go and you pick certain rides. And depending on the park, it's either, you know, kind of tiered where it's like you choose one from column A and one from column B um, or others. It's, you know, other various rides and they give you times and things like that. But the biggest thing is, again, if you aren't an experienced Disney planner or get help from somebody, it can be very confusing because basically you have to kind of map out your day. You have to know exactly what park you're going on what day and if you have dining reservations or if you want to do dining or something, you kind of have to make sure that your day kind of all fits together. Um, it's it's very much a military operation. There are people that spend hours and weeks planning things out and putting spreadsheets together to try and, you know, maximize uh, the most of, of their fast passes. Um, and again, it was something that was free. They actually started it almost 20 years ago. It's uh, the fast pass system's almost been around for, for 20 years and it, it has its hiccups. Um, but for the most part, you know, it, 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 it works if you know how to, to use the system. Um, but again, when the pandemic hit and when the park reopened because of limited capacity, they, put fast pass on hold. Uh, so basically everything was, you just waited in, in regular lines. So what this article talks about, and this is something that's been rumored 
uh, for many years now is that they were talking about getting rid of the fast pass system altogether. So it seems that it was actually as early as 2007, there were indications that Disney executives were looking for ways to obviously monetize. Oh, surprise, the fast pass system. So Disney had spent billions of dollars upgrading Walt Disney World's guest tracking infrastructure via the My Magic Plus initiative. Um, and that's why they were looking to kind of monetize the fast pass, but that kind of took a back seat when they were updating everything for the magic band system. Cause the fast pass system, if you remember, were actually just little tickets. You basically went up to the ride and actually back then when the original fast pass system happened, you couldn't get a fast pass until you got to the park that day. And what you would do is you would go up to the ride and it would say it had a 40 minute wait, but then you could get a fast pass. And the idea was that the fast pass would be roughly about the same or a little bit more than the wait time for the ride. So that this way you didn't have to wait on the queue. You'd scan your park ticket, you'd push a button and you'd get your little hard copy. Well, they advanced it over the years as they started doing everything with the magic bands to make these fast pass reservations ahead of time. So there would be some that would be available that day for people who just decided to go to the park that day or hadn't planned anything. But for the most part, most fast passes would already be gone, especially for the, the big rides that day. So in this article, it talks about how now the rumors are that Disney, because they haven't started doing the fast passes again, that they're going to turn it into some sort of monetized system, which other theme parks actually already do that and have been doing that for years. Uh, as an example, Universal offers their skip the line pass and it's based on, it's on a tier system. So you can either get a skip the line where it would allow you, I don't know how many rides, but you'd only be able to go on that certain ride like one time. Or you could get the unlimited pass, which was like $15 more, where you could go on multiple rides, basically skipping the line multiple times. So, you know, whatever the Harry Potter ride is, you could go multiple times. With Disney's Fast Pass, system that they currently have it's just a one-time ride now you get three to start and then once you use up all those three for that day then you can get additional ones if there are anything available so it's a little bit of a, a different system i know the six flag parks do the same thing where you can do um, it's like for I think just their roller coasters or something you can do a, a skip the line thing so you know so now again the rumors are that Disney is looking to maybe do some sort of a tiered thing uh, they did talk about how Shanghai Disneyland Shanghai had started doing a paid system but again their uh, Shanghai Disney isn't run by Disney they just at least the the name and whatnot. Um, but the interesting thing with this is there was another article that just came out today talking about possibly FastPass was coming back because they noticed on the uh, My Disney Experience app for the wait times, it said standby wait time with whatever. And that terminology was always used when there was standby it doesn't and mean it's fast coming back for free. Right. It doesn't mean it's coming back, but at least it, it, it sounds like they're updating the <coughs> the app at least because before <sighs> yesterday or before I guess it was yesterday, uh, it was just the standard wait time. It didn't have standby. So, again, until something comes out, everything is really kind of up in the air. So problem number one with this is FastPass came out to solve a problem mm -hmm. that Disney had, and right. that was overcrowding. Right. Disney has never made an attempt to address the actual problem of overcrowding, right. except for Rise of the Resistance with the virtual queue mm -hmm. 
and the Dumbo ride with putting a second ride in and then having the play area for the kids to wait right. for their turn. Right. Now, I believe the super, uh, the, not the Superman, <laughs> wrong, wrong one, the Spider-Man ride in, is virtual queue as well. Is yes. virtual queue. So, so, so let's dispel the rumor sure. that Disney's giving you some kind of free service out of the goodness of their heart with Fast Pass. <laughs> they're right. not. All they're trying to do is to compensate for the fact that they're trying to cram as many asses in the seats as possible of these rides, and they're inconveniencing people by having a 45-minute constant wait to get on a, a 30, you know, a two-minute ride maybe, mm -hmm. like Peter Pan. Right. It's poor planning on their part that required Fast Pass in the first part. Mm -hmm. It was a partial fix to a problem that they themselves created. Mm -hmm. Now... They're going to ask people to pay for that service. Well, I'm already paying $120 to be in here to go on mm -hmm. these rides. And there's a very good chance that if I don't have Fast Pass, I won't be able to go on the rides that I want to go on, despite the fact that I've paid $120 plus whatever else I paid to stay in the park and eat and, and everything else. Mm -hmm. That's per person, mm -hmm. mind you. Right. So when they do this, they're going to charge you per person for oh, Fast absolutely. Pass as well. Mm hmm the other problem that I have is this logic of, oh, well, the other the other theme parks have been doing this for years now. That's really not a good excuse. Right. If every other theme park you got punched in the face when you walked in, does that justify Disney punching you in the face when you walked in? <laughs> no, it's an idiotic <laughs> premise. Right, right. So to say that other theme parks are doing it wrong, so we're going to do it wrong, is really not the way to set the bar. The problem that I have here is Disney has a solution for this problem, and it is virtual queues. Mm -hmm. They've already successfully implemented it. Mm -hmm. They've already updated their technology to get to the point that you can do it. And they're already milking everything else out of me that they can possibly get when we go to the park to begin with. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to find new ways to reach into my pocket and take money out. You're already taking enough out as it is. This is just extortion at this point. Why am I going to go to the park, pay as much as I do to get in the park to go on two rides, maybe three rides, then pay more to not wait in a queue? Because let's take a look at what Disney's queue management techniques have been over the past. Instead of making the queue shorter or adding more rides like they did with Dumbo to lessen the queue or make the queues move faster, they've turned the queues into an attraction. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can play games while you're waiting in line. Oh, that's great. So that makes that 45-minute wait so much better because I can sit here and push buttons in the queue while I'm waiting. Like that. Or you play games on the Disney Play app. Right. And, that, like right. It's, it's mm -hmm. all about trying to distract you from mm -hmm. the fact that Disney is trying to cram people into a line mm -hmm. and, and make you wait. Right. Like Disney is one big giant wait when you go to the parks. Mm -hmm. Because they have no concept of, well, let's limit the number of people in the park. The only limitations they have are ones that are imposed on them by local ordinances for how many people can be in the park. Right. They don't have any courtesy whatsoever to say, okay, you know what? We've got too many people on this ride. Let's shut this ride down for right now. Let's not even try to get people in the queue. No, mm -hmm. what they do, and you, you see it with Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. They'll just keep extending the line. They'll put you in the cattle corral, mm -hmm. and they'll have you walk back and forth for an hour and a half while you try to get on a three-minute ride. Right. It's a terrible user experience. Mm -hmm. It's a disservice to your customers that you're trying to get money from. Right. And it's overall, it ruins the vacation experience. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's, you know, and one of the things we talked about a couple of weeks ago is the patent for the upgraded virtual queue yep. coming into play. So, you know, and and they basically said if people are waiting in a queue, again, they're not spending money on drinks or refreshments or something like that. So for them, don't make us pay for right. a Absolutely. virtual queue because if you're not having us wait, we're going to go get something to eat and something to drink. Right. And you're going to... Penalize me right. by rather, extorting more money out of me. Right, so I'd rather wait. pay for a refreshment, yep. for a thing of popcorn, for a drink, than have to pay to not 
wait on a line. Absolutely. Don't extort the money out of me Give so me I don't something have to wait. for my money. Incentivize me to spend my money so right. that I get some kind of benefit from right. it. Right. And, and it sounds like you have two competing philosophies here mm-hmm. that are going to clash. Right. You know, the more stories I hear like this that come out, the less and less interested I am going to Disney and giving them my money. I know. You know, this goes back to the big giant sinkhole. You know, that is what <laughs> Disney is. It's a big giant <laughs> sinkhole that people just show up, they back their cars up, and they just unload the trunk with money into the yeah. big sinkhole. Yeah. So, you know, again, it sounds like, you know, something is coming, something's brewing. You know, is it something that's going to happen right away? Is it something, you know, because the other thing too is now capacity limits have been, you know, lifted. So the wait times are are going up. You know, that was one of the things, you know, if we had decided to go, you know, last August when, you know, the park first opened, we would have had the run of the park. (laughs) You know, we could have done everything like five times. But you know, I it was have a to pandemic, wonder. So. I have to wonder what this fundamental change in philosophy is to go from the standard Disney money grab to this let's shake them down when they walk in the park money grab. Is it the change of management? Yeah, I don't is know. it demand from sh- uh, shareholders? Like, what is it? It's not. The, there hasn't been some industry fundamental change in right. industry styling that would have brought. And this that's on. the thing too is everything is just starting to come back slowly in in certain areas yes the the disney parks you know orlando has almost been reopened now for a year you just had california you know open up not that long ago other places still haven't even opened up why would you you know there are still people that are out of work there are still people that have been out of work right. you know why would you try you know if anything you know, do a, a discounted rate, do something. Well, and it's almost you like know. Disney's like, oh, well, we lost so much money over the last year. We need to make it all back now. Well, you right. know, like, I got news for you. Everybody did. Right. You, you've got people that were out of work. You've got businesses that mm-hmm. closed down. Right. You've got a lot of people, a lot of businesses that took a loss last mm-hmm. year because of the pandemic. Right. They're not trying to rake their customers right. over the coals to make it all up in, in, in a month. You right. Know? Right. Disney needs to back off and realize that they're supposed to be offering you a value proposition. Mm-hmm. You cannot expect to get more money out of people if you're not going to give them something back. Yep. And unfortunately, that's been the Disney philosophy the last 10 years. Every year they raise their ticket prices, mm-hmm. whether or not they add anything new to the park. Right. And they're already ridiculously overpriced. So. Do you feel better now? <sighs> anyway. Okay. <laughs> Let's have a moment of zen. Um, Glad I got that off my chest. (laughs) We're going to take a quick break while I take my blood pressure medication. And uh, we'll be back with our uh, Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. (laughs) For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. (laughs) So, hey, guess what? Another Disney villain might be getting his own Disney Plus series. Who might that be? Oh, I don't know. That guy. Uh, He's half the man he used to be. (laughs) 
what a dad joke that was. So over the years, the Star Wars villain has become one of the most celebrated facets of the uh, fantasy franchise. From Darth Vader in George Lucas's original trilogy to Darth Sidious um, in the Star Wars prequels, the franchise bad guys are some of the most popular evildoers in pop culture. I, I can't imagine anybody that would like any I have no villain. idea what you're talking about. Yeah, let's see. How many Darth Vader's are? <laughs> can't see him from this camera angle. That's <laughs> yeah. your side. If you change it to your side, let's see how many Darth Vader's are there. Anyway, so it seems that Darth Maul is another iconic Star Wars villain who has quickly become a fan favorite despite his limited screen time. Um, he had a cameo appearance at the end of one of your favorite Star Wars movies, Solo, a Star Wars story. I want to be a pilot. <laughs> did you see the eye roll I did while I said that? <laughs> um, so obviously fans have been eager to see him in a live in something live action once more. So the good news is that it seems Lucasfilms and Disney are rumored to be working on a live action series featuring Maul um, with a story that picks up sometime during the time frame of uh, the same as the Solo movie. Uh, Darth Maul made his Star Wars villain debut in 1999. God, that was a long time ago. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Um, and that was also the first appearance of Darth Sidious. Um, and although he seemed to have been killed by Obi-Wan at the end of the film, he returned in 2008's animated series, Star Wars The Clone Wars, and in 2014 Star Wars Rebels. So throughout his Star Wars appearance, Maul has been portrayed as a villain and a disgraced Sith Lord who uh, renounced his Darth status after it became apparent that Sidious never cared about him. Aww. <laughs> Poor Sith Lord. I almost feel, you know, feel bad for him now. Not really. <laughs> um, so a powerful crime lord in his own right, Maul is also Obi-Wan's relentless arch nemesis. Mm, you know, that would kind of be interesting if he shows up. Well, I don't know. He Is he still really dead by the time Obi-Wan? No, he's still alive. Okay, so he could ma maybe make an appearance in the Obi Wan series. Sure, why maybe. Not? So, hmm, so you know, obviously, it's worth mentioning that everything is still in the early, st you know, planning stages. You know, as we talked, I guess it was last week of all the different uh, Star Wars uh, things that are um, projects that are in the works. This is not one of them so this is kind of one of those hey we got rid of that one look we have a free spot we can you know do this one um however it does seem that um ray parks who was the actor who's been in these live action roles it seems that he uh probably won't be making the return as Darth Maul because he got into some hot water after some videos uh, got posted on Instagram of him and a mysterious woman doing some not so mysterious things. <laughs> um, so now, you know, fans are trying to figure who would replace the live action version uh, of, of Darth Maul. But obviously looking at it, you could almost put anybody in it because it's full makeup and the horns and everything. So it really kind of doesn't matter who is playing him, you know, with all the, the made up makeup and prosthetics, you could probably make anybody uh, look like Darth Maul. So it'll be interesting to, to see if it comes to light and who, you know, takes the, the role uh, so, you know, does it happen or does it get thrown, you know, to the wayside? Well, I do love the fact that they had postulated that Sam Witwer, who's done mm -hmm. the voice since True. Phantom Menace mm -hmm. for the mall, might be one of the candidates because his face is very well known in Star Wars mm -hmm. as the character of Vader's apprentice. Right. Uh, from one of the video games. Uh, but the voice is definitely something everyone's going to relate mm -hmm. to. Right. Uh, the fact that 
they can chop the guy in half. <laughs> and he still comes back. And, well, I love the I love the line earlier in the article about people have been have been anxious to see him in a live action sequence <laughs> after he got chopped in chopped half. Chopped in half. So, yeah, okay. I mean, I think Lucas realized a mistake that he made uh, later on. He even acknowledged that, you know, he had a great villain on his hands and mm-hmm. kind of wasted that opportunity. And then we wound up getting the geriatric Sith, Sith Lord and Christopher Lee. Mm-hmm. Not to take anything away from Christopher Lee. He was a fantastic actor. Mm-hmm. He portrayed some of the greatest horror villains of mm-hmm. all time. Yeah. But by the time he took on the role of Count Dooku, he was like 90 and not even convincing in the role <laughs> as someone who could like, best a Jedi or something. Right, right. Um, so uh, I, I, I don't think they need any more shows at this point in time. Right, right. Um, but if they are going to you know, cancel Rangers of the Republic because mm-hmm. of another controversial Disney star, then I wouldn't object to Darth Maul getting his own series. Mm-hmm. As long as they don't have Solo in there. I don't want to hear any more. I want to be a pilot. I'm a pilot. That's just, just don't put that in there. We should be good to go. Okay. Speaking of Gina Carano, <laughs> always seems to be in the news. Let's talk about that one. So Lucasfilm has made its view on about Gina Carano crystal clear. There is no force in the galaxy compelling enough. No to, force. Ah, I like that. <laughs> to bring back Cara Dune back, whether the fans like it or not. The studio has severed ties with the Mandalorian star a while back, and we all know why, because we've talked about it multiple times. Um, and But it seems that not it's not quite the case where Disney merchandising is concerned. So Lego is still offering mini figures of Cara, uh, Gina Carano's Cara Dune, evident by an upcoming bumper pack marketed in a recent Japanese catalog. So the images were kind of fuzzy, but the one figure, stocky build and wavy dark hair is unmistakably Dune. Uh, the minifigure is part of a Lego Star Wars set that is scheduled for release this summer. The set also features uh, Moff Gideon's gun-touting light cruiser front and center, uh, including in the lineup of Mandalorian figures. So Cara Dune is accompanied by the Mandalorian, Grogu, Moff Gideon, uh, Fennec, and a Dark Trooper. So it's a whole bunch of different characters with it. Um, Lucasfilm is one of Disney's many subsidiary, subsidiary, so it makes sense for the company to double back and hit off the switch on any prospective Cara Dune action figures to keep its distance from the act uh, from the actress. Um, but obviously certain things kind of were already in, in production when things happened. Um, Hasbro reportedly canceled any future black series, uh, Cara Dunes the same week that she was fired. Uh, the action figure was a huge sellout when it hit the shelves in 2020, motivating Hasbro to bump, uh, uh, rubber stamp another production wrong. Um, then you had Big Bad Toy Store, who told The Hollywood Reporter that it was accepting pre-orders for the action figures when Hasbro had aborted the whole line. And that was something like eBay was going crazy for a little while with people that were, uh, you know, selling it, you know, for crazy amount of money because you couldn't get them anymore. Um, so, but fortunately, the brick owners... Um, Lego wasn't deterred by her firing in any way and continues to manufacture the minifigures related to the character. Um, so she's also going to be, uh, part of, uh, ATST Raider set, uh, that's inspired by the Mandalorian. Then there's a couple of other different, uh, sets, like four or five different sets where she'll be one of the, the different characters that, that comes with it. Um, now I don't know if these are only going to be in Japan or if they're going to be coming to the U S. Um, but it looks like it might be available online possibly in, in August. So it'll be interesting. You know, are you going to see, the same kind of flood of people going and buying it just because, oh, you can't get it. But if technically like Lego is still making them and they're just coming out, 
there probably, I'm guessing, won't be that whole. You're not, probably not going to have that rush because you're not going to have right. that limited availability. Right. And you kind of can get away with it by having it in Lego because none of the Lego stuff is really canon. Right. True. So, you know, you can use that as your out for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as long as she doesn't, that character doesn't start showing up in some of the Lego shorts that they do, you should be okay. Right. She kind of stays in the background. And, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, the, the problem that you run into, and, and this is why they should have recast the part. The problem that you run into is that you've put this significant character mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. And you can't just ignore the character now because they played such a significant role in two seasons of The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. So it would have been logically more sensible to recast the part mm -hmm. if you're going to blacklist the actors right. than to just pretend the character never existed. Mm -hmm. That's a mistake. That's going to screw up your continuity. Yeah. And you've kind of got a character gap now in your storyline as mm -hmm. to, okay, how are you going to explain where she's at now? Right. Oh, she went for coffee. Yeah. Right. Right. Haven't yeah. seen her since. You know, you do know. you just not go back to that planet where right. she was? Or do you, you kill know? the character off in a main, means that doesn't require you to have the yeah, face like the. There? <laughs> the five first five seconds of the show you see a ship and it blows up like dude wasn't she on that yeah, yeah and yeah. that's that's sort of been a very popular technique you know they did it back in star trek the next generation when uh denise crosby decided that she didn't want to be on the right the show anymore because she didn't like the role that that her character the direction her character was going right so roddenberry just killed the character <laughs> off in like this really lame death scene right uh, so you never had questions about it. Mm -hmm. So you, you you either need to recast it or you need to kill the character to 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 finish that story arc for her. Right. So, but I I doubt that Disney's going to do either of those things. I guess we shall see. We shall see. Uh, and that was all we had for our uh, uh, what was that? Our tales to the edge of my sanity, right? Right. Right. Uh, we'll be <laughs> right back with our entertainment news. <laughs> Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Go for entertainment news. Uh, so Pink is feeling the love. So on Monday, the 41-year-old singer shared a clip on Twitter of a performance video made by students of Central Bucks High School West singing her hit, What About Us? The video, which features students from Doylestown, Pennsylvania, is special to the pop star, whose real name is Alicia Moore, since she also attended that school. Shouting out to her high school choir teacher in her post, Pink recalled that the instructor used the famous quote to her, Alicia is not a solo, she wrote. But I love this and it brought me to tears, she added. "All You all sound amazing and I'm totally overwhelmed with love. Although Pink didn't actually graduate from the school, she later uh, earned her GED. So this was a really sweet story and the video was very well done um uh, by the the choir singing uh one of her hit songs uh every now and then they kind of threw in pictures of her from high school uh and so it was a, a really touching tribute and it was really sweet that she uh posted it so that other people uh could could see it as well 
You know, it's funny because when we sat through the moving up ceremony on Thursday, Mm -hmm. seeing all those kids there, hearing the one girl sing the national anthem, I couldn't help but think how many kids from from this class are going to be famous someday, Mm -hmm. you know? And it was funny because I had never, uh, it was after I had edited the notes for the show, I had never really thought of that at any other graduation Mm -hmm. before. And like nowadays, it's such a likelihood Mm -hmm. that you could make it as a pop star, a YouTube star, Mm -hmm. or like there's so many different avenues. Well, and that's the thing is there's so many things that are available, not even, you know, the the American idols or or things like that. Just the people that are finding some sort of notoriety on TikTok or YouTube or, or things like that. And how creative, you know, these kids are or how talented they are. It it is. It's astonishing. So, you know, it was sweet that her, you know, alma mater was paying tribute to her and that she in turn, you know, gave them, you know, some love. How much inspiration does that serve to those kids in the high school Mm -hmm. now to to go out and excel now and and to see that as an example? I think that's a that's a great story. Mm hmm. What's next? <sighs> so this was sad news for for me and I'm sure, you know, millions of other people. Um, you know, this is that time of year where, you know, uh, the the upfronts happen for the different uh, networks and shows get canceled and shows get renewed. Uh, so it seemed that earlier this week, uh, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist has now been canceled after two seasons. Uh, it was uh, just confirmed earlier uh, this week. Uh, it was something where it was kind of back and forth. They weren't sure if it was going to happen or not. Um, they were actually hoping that if NBC didn't pick it up, that uh, NBC's streaming service, uh, Peacock, was actually going to pick it up because there was an article that I saw uh, a couple weeks ago that talked about um, the viewership had gone down for watching the show live, but that for streaming, the show had been doing really well. So they thought, OK, well, maybe if, um, you know, NBC doesn't pick it up, Peacock will pick it up and it can still continue streaming. But unfortunately, um we have to say, you know, goodbye to to Zoe. It was uh, for me. I've always been, you know, a musical kind of gal. So, you know, musicals, uh, you know, movies and TV shows. I always liked. I was a huge fan of Glee. Um, so this was kind of the next step. It was the, um, you know, older version, I guess, of Glee in a way. Uh, it was an interesting concept that. Um, you know, all these people would start singing these musical numbers, but yet they didn't know that they were singing the musical numbers because, you know, Zoe kind of had this special power uh, t- type thing uh, that happened. So it would have been interesting to kind of see where the story went along. But obviously, you know, at this point, it looks like it won't be happening. And of course, this kind of goes along with you know a bunch of other shows that we've really enjoyed for the past couple of years that um you know it's funny when you when you look at the list of shows that didn't get renewed it's actually kind of small uh there was one article that listed you know by network here are all the shows that are returning and here's like the three shows that aren't coming back. And it was like (laughs) of the shows that weren't coming back, they were the ones that we really enjoyed. Zoe being one of them, Prodigal Son, um, which was another one. And then obviously Netflix is a whole, you know, different animal with their shows that, um, you know, seem to do really, really well. And then all of a sudden get canceled. Now, again, is it because of, the you know the after effects of the pandemic you know not really sure um you know what it is but it you know kind of sad to to see them see them go i just want it to be noted on the record (laughs) 
I did not watch this show. Right. So I cannot you, be held you, responsible for this one right, being canceled. Right. Because and to kind of give everybody an, uh, <laughs> a backstory on that, what always seems to happen is if it's a show that the two of us both watch and we both like, after a year or two, it gets canceled. So there have been shows where I watched all on my own. And the show was doing fine. And all of a sudden, you start watching it. And it gets canceled. And within a year and a half, yep. it gets canceled. So, And we do the same thing to restaurants, too. Right, so right, right. We, we try not to eat out very <laughs> often unless it's a restaurant that. we don't like. Right, right. So, yes, Zoe was not a show that, that you watched. Yeah, so. It's not my responsibility no, this, this time. One, yeah, so. So that was all we had for entertainment news. We'll be right back with our insightful picks. Joe, for your insightful pick. So last weekend, yeah, last weekend, we finally got around to having some family movie time. And we finally were able to watch uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, this is streaming on Disney+. Plus. It's actually also still in uh, the theaters, I believe, in, in some cases. So it's Walt Disney's animation studios, Raya and... Raya, I think, actually. Raya and the Last Dragon travels to the fantasy world of Kumandra, where humans and dragons lived together in harmony long ago. But then an evil force threatened the land. The dragons sacrificed themselves to humanity. Now, 500 years later, the same evil has returned, and it's up to a lone warrior, Raya, to track down the legendary Last Dragon to restore the fractured land and its divided people. However, along her journey, she's learned that it'll take more than a dragon to save the world. It's going to take trust and teamwork as well. As well. Raya and the Last Dragon features the voices of Kelly Marie Tron as Raya, the warrior whose wit is as sharp as her blade, and Aquafina as the magical, mythical, self-deprecating dragon named uh, Sisu. Uh, characters also include a street savvy 10 year old entrepreneur um, and the formidable giant Tong with the thieving little toddler and her band of orgies, um, little monkeys. I, I don't that they, they were probably the, the cute ones of the, the group. So it's a very interesting, hey, we need to work together as a team kind of uh, movie. Um, we all enjoyed it. Uh, there were definitely some l humorous moments. There were, you know, some teary moments as well. But overall, I think we we all really, uh, really enjoyed it. Yep. Good pick. Thank you. So my pick this week, much to most people's surprise, is not a documentary. Oh, my God. Are you feeling okay? This one I have to credit uh, my son Sam for. Uh, this is Invincible on Amazon Prime. Invincible is an American adult animated superhero streaming television series. It's based on the Image Comics series of the same name by Robert Kirkman, Corey Walker, and Ryan Otley. The series premiered on Amazon Prime uh, Video on March 25th of 2021 to critical acclaim for its animation, action sequences, and performances. The series stars Kevin Ewan, Sandra Oh, and J.K. Simmons. In April of 2021, Amazon actually renewed the series for a second and third season, which should give you a hint as to how good this show is. The series initially revolves around 17-year-old Mark Grayson and his Transformation into a superhero under the guidance of his father, Omni-Man, the most powerful person on the planet. Mark Grayson is a normal teenager, except for the fact that his father, Nolan, is the most powerful superhero on the planet. Shortly after his 17th birthday, Mark begins to develop powers of his own and enters into his father's tutelage. But as Mark develops powers on his own, he discovers his father's legacy may not be as heroic as it seems. This show is the closest thing to an animated version of another superhero series we've showcased on our insightful picks, The Boys. We're two episodes into the first eight episodes of season one, and the show's managed to keep me on the edge of my seat with each episode. 
The complexity of the plots, depth of the characters, and the throw-caution-to-the-wind attitude towards storytelling is a refreshing take on a superhero-filled entertainment world uh, we live in today. What if our superheroes had a dark side? That's a question that they seem to be asking a lot these days in these shows. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see where the story goes. Uh, Episode one was very interesting. It was exceptionally graphic. Probably not a show that you want to have the kids watching. Definitely not a show you want kids to watch. (laughs) Um, I think we both agree that the animation is kind of rough at times to get Mm -hmm. through. But the storytelling, I think, is spot on. Right. Uh, there's humor in there. Mm-hmm. There's, uh, I don't think we've seen too many touching moments. Not in touching in a good way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> most, oh, look at that head explode. Most, yeah, you know? <laughs> most touching usually re- revolves around someone's head exploding or coming off or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, is a, uh, it is a very graphic show. Mm-hmm. So. Invincible on Amazon Prime streaming now. We'll be right back. So I think that's it this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't have any afterthoughts. We don't have anything that we're, we're doing this weekend to highlight. No highlight reels to run. Unless you wanted to show the graduation, which I don't think anybody else would really care about. No, and I didn't I didn't prep it, unfortunately. It's it was okay. a very shaky camera, too, because it was zoomed in a lot. Right, right. So I don't want to give anybody motion sickness. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> yeah. So before we go, I would once again uh, ask folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of the podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment. You can find video versions of all of the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, pretty much any place you can get a podcast. I uh, would also ask folks, uh, write in, give us your feedback, tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us at Twitter at insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can find us on Instagram if I ever post to it at instagram.com backslash insights into things. You can find audio versions of the podcast on the web at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. Com. You can find the video versions of all of our podcasts, all three of them, at youtube.com backslash insights into things. We do stream five days a week. This week we stream <laughs> six days a week on Twitch and YouTube, by the way. But on Twitch, we're at twitch.tv slash insights into things. And if you're an Amazon Prime uh, subscriber, you do get a free Twitch Prime subscription, which we'd appreciate you throwing our way. And if you miss links for... Uh, anything that we've mentioned and you want to go to our main site, which has links to everything. And hopefully maybe this weekend we'll have profile pictures. We might. We might. There's rumors. There's rumors of profile pictures possibly finally going up. Because, you know, if you're a listener of the show, you don't know what we look like unless you watch the video. (laughs) Right. Exactly. So, hey, if you want to see what we look like in a certain form, Hint, hint. Uh, you can go to our main website at uh, www.insightsintothings.com. I think that's it. Another one on the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.